All right, guys, down here on the greenway, standard alluvial forest behind me. Um, we're gonna go over a bunch of the common plants that you find in the alluvial forest. It'd be an easy one to get to since it's right down here by the greenway. Probably one of the few places that's gonna remain open during the, for the duration of field botany. I don't know how they close the greenway since there's a lot of random places you can access and I'll actually point out where you guys can access uh, the one on campus from somewhere else besides campus. See a white oak over there. Tons of poison ivy. See all those raggy ropes? Yeah. Okay, kind of getting into our most distinctive species of alluvial forest and that would be a rodinaria or uh, can see some stands over there. Our largest member of the Poesie family native to North America. And that's river cane. Lots of it throughout here. Stinko, we've also got some brambles, some kind of rubus, probably blackberry. I'm trying to see if there's anything else different down there. You can see Toby Creek is down there. Everything's marked. Getting marked for uh, restoration, quote unquote, which first involves complete and total destruction. What do we have over there? We've got a maple. Can't really see. We'll get out there and walk around. Plenty of invasive honeysuckle. I know this is field botany, but in field ecology, you'll learn most of the common amphibians. I think that's a fowler's toad. More than three warts in those little black margins. And, uh, ooh, box elder. Another really common one. Fluvial forest has these groups of three at the end. Honestly, kind of looks like the whole tree is one giant thing of poison ivy, but if you follow the pedial down to these leaves, box elder. Sometimes you'll come across this in a super wet area of an oak hickory forest, but much more common in areas that flood, like these alluvial plains, commonly used by Catawba and Cherokee to make flutes. Easily recognizable. So uh, just some, some, some of the ground cover spread throughout here, all this stuff. This little tiny little grass, this is a uh, microstegium or that Japanese stilt grass that invades a lot of areas. These things popping up all over here, this is jewelweed. Have you ever heard of impatience? It's not a genus. Yeah, I don't remember the family for them. I don't think they're related to, they have this orange flower. I don't see any of them popping out this early in the season quite yet. Let's see if we can find some later. Um, probably in their own family, I don't know. I don't know what family they're in. There's some violets in and amongst here. There's some of the ground cover back in here. Let's see what else we got over here. Oh uh, yes, yeah, more elm. <laughs> right next to right next to the river cane. Right next to the creek. Here's a good sized specimen. Look at that mottled bark going up all the way to the top right there. American sycamore, Platanus occidentalis, uh, in the Joyce Kilmer forest, one of the only stands of old growth trees left. There's a, there's some huge ones. We're talking like three or four people to wrap your arms around at the base. Um, huge diameter, DBH, diameter of breast height. Um, magnificent trees, lobe leaves, that palmate venation. See if I can find some leaves lower down. American plane tree. Lots of different words for this one. All right, southern sugar maple. Also, oftentimes, have a red stem. But a much more standard or quintessential uh, maple leaf shape. Kind of looks more like the maple leaf on the flag. Acer floridanum. Sometimes I say acer sacrum, I think, mistakenly. Because that's the sugar. Latin word for sugar, rather. Tons of sugar maple, maples down in the uh, 
alluvial forest. You can kind of see a little bit in the canopy. There you go. That uh, Orcus rubra, red oak, northern red oak. This here also in the alluvial forest, sweet gums. They don't mind it when it's flooded too much. Pretty solid generalist. Not as good as the tulip poplar, but see them elsewhere. More sycamores. You'll notice sometimes that uh, the sycamore bark doesn't start to get mottled and peely to it till about halfway up. What else we got? Sycamore, elms, sweet gums, lots of things we've seen so far. Distinctive sweet gum leaves. Um, if you're having a hard time distinguishing these from the acers or the maples, um, it's always helpful. <laughs> There's so much poison ivy down here. You know I love you guys because I'm definitely going to end up with poison ivy. Be careful. All these three leaves, poison ivy everywhere. But if you're having a hard time distinguishing the maple leaves, then just scope out the fact that uh, there are sweet gum pods, or the seed pods, oftentimes referred to as gumballs, at the base of the sweet gums and not at the base of the maples. And wear pants. Don't wear shorts like me. So I'm looking for ash trees. So this is an even compound leaflet. Um, God, look at the bark on that. What is that thing? I think that's another southern sugar maple up there. Probably not too clear, but just a big old tree. I'm looking for ash trees, but the emerald ash borer, which is this mean, mean insect, insect that eats the cambium underneath the bark wiped out a huge number of ashes along uh, Toby Creek in our alluvial forests. You guys, you'll start to notice this, uh, this transitional zone across from Rudy Creek, not Rudy Creek, whoop, across from Toby Creek right here, not alluvial forest. You'll see this transitional zone, right? You'll see some Eastern red cedars across the way. Uh, pine trees dead. It looks like short leaf pine. Um, across the way, you see this mixture. You see some oaks and some hickories, but you also see some elms. You see one of those transitional zones because you've got some flooding rarely all the way up to this other side here. But as it gets drier, you'll see an oak hickory pine mixture right next to this alluvial forest. Because one of the things I want to point out to you about elm trees is that so. Sometimes they have pretty big leaves, usually when I'd say they're teenagers. Um, when they're younger, they're quite a bit smaller. And now sometimes these can be different species of elms as well, right? You can have winged elms where you have this winged bark along the edge, which we'll find here in a little while. Um, but sometimes when they're little, focus. Focus. There we go. They can be quite a bit smaller. They still have that highly serrated edge. They still come to tips on the end. They're still oval shaped. They're still alternate. Um, but you can see, I don't know if you can really see from here. I guess I should have just brought these over here. Let me break these off and show you. Don't worry, we've got plenty of leaves here. Yeah, you can see this teenage elm compared to uh, this younger elm. And then once again, once a tree gets mature, um, its leaves will be oftentimes small again. See those three leaves of the box elder off in the distance. Oh yeah, that actually comes through that time. So don't let the size throw you off. In fact, what's even weirder is that oftentimes younger trees, or what I like to call teenagers, since they're in their growth spurt, they have really big leaves. And you'll be like, well, how are these still the same tree? Well, they can certainly still be the same tree. Oh, all right, I was hoping we'd find one of these. Let's see, formation of little mulberries. This is a red mulberry, Morris rubra and the Moraceae family. Um, 
a lot of figs as well. Um, okay, so there's a tree that looks like this called basswood. Uh, and typically the mulberry will have more of these mitten-shaped leaves, but in theory it has a milky sap when you pull off a leaf. So, oh, if you're confused, pull it off and you'll see this white milky sap exude from the end of the tip. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. So, mulberry, these leaves that look like mittens. Uh, we kind of have an advantage here because we also have some mulberry starting to form, but base would look like these, though mulberries typically prefer this wet habitat a little more great find for an alluvial area. So now we've got some younger sycamores here. We can come check out the leaves a little closer. Also kind of looking like, uh, you can see when they're a little younger, they're a little more V-shaped at the bottom. As they get older, these leaves tend to like space out um, a little closer to like a wider edge at the bottom, kind of like you see in um, maples. Why that won't focus? There we go. So, sycamore leaf. You can see that peely bark's not really there on the younger specimens. You can go off this leaf shape. Kind of looks like sweet gum, kind of looks like maple, but once again, once you've been looking at these things for a while, you guys, these look extremely unique. Here's a cool find. This is um, black elderberry. You've probably heard of elderberry syrup. Um, shrub likes wet areas, um, has compound leaves that are arranged opposite. Usually uh, one, two, three, four, five, I think it's like five to nine or 10 leaflets, probably five to nine. Uh, Sambucus canadensis. But yeah, you'll find these sometimes, usually at woodland edges oftentimes, but they do, they definitely don't mind some flooding. They prefer good, well-drained, moisture-rich soil. Black elderberry. Here we have a uh, dogwood. Cornus, Florida. Doesn't look like a... Oh, there are some flowers up there towards the top. I don't know if you can see them. Still a few flowers left. But also, you'll find from time to time in the understory. Try to zoom in on some of that for you. But here we've got a box elder tree and cross vine growing up it, which is also common in these alluvial habitats. You can see those orange and yellow tubular flowers, kind of gorgeous. Cross vine, uh, Pignonia, Capriolata, I don't know the family. Once again, probably, I don't know, probably their own family, but really common evergreen vine. Uh, let me see if I can get the leaves up close. Not really too clear, but you can definitely see the flowers right there.